Welcome back, gamers, to the Experience Points Podcast, and this is episode three of this lovely, lovely podcast, and slated for May 23rd. We are doing this thing a little bit early because I am heading out of town this week, and that's okay. And uh, <clears throat> it will be released on Saturday. So, today on the podcast, we are talking about the new friendships in Mortal Kombat, which we are very excited about because there was way too much blood. Just a little bit. <laughs> Getting a little sad over here, especially with the whole Corona thing going on. Um, so, friendships are a nice little change of pace. Nice. I think Animal Crossing needs more fatalities. I think they need to even out the world, the gaming world. Yeah? Jones? No, they, well, <laughs> well, no, because you just want to kill all those um, neighbors and residents that you don't like. No, we can't have that. There has to no. be a way to get them out of here. There has to be a way. It's, it's, <laughs> it just, there's no way that they're leaving my island, damn it. A yeah, body bag is not the way to do it. <laughs> um, we're also going to talk about the, the new PS5 lineup. Uh, I'm going to find a Fantasy 7 remake uh, this week in gaming history, which you got some fun what's coming up. And then a nice little surprise announcement at the end. Surprise. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. This week in the news, first off, uh, last week, I mean, it's no surprise, but last week they talked about the... Uh, they showed a couple of friendships in Mortal Kombat 11 because there's new DLC coming out called Aftermath. And uh, <clears throat> I've been playing Mortal Kombat 11 on my PS4 and that game is gorgeous. The story is actually really interesting. And uh, I love how they evolved the characters and treated them in that game. Did I mention boobs? <laughs> no, you did not mention boobs. <laughs> Well, I'm going to mention boobs because they're there. Of course there's boobs in the game, <laughs> unless they're sh actually showing some nips or something like that. That's nothing impressive. Mm. So what you need to um, elaborate, <laughs> what does the boobs do exactly? Do they just jiggle? Are they like dead or alive boobs? Or is there something more to it? Like, do they actually have like a freaking nudity in the game? What what what, what are the boobs? Are you asking because based on your answer, would you buy the game? <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just that they, uh, the physics are very well done. Um, they're not like overly done like in uh, Dead or Alive, Dead which, or is, Alive. which is still nice, but um, they're just they're done well. I see. AKA Katana's butt. <laughs> the boobs aren't butts. I know, but they, the butts are the boobs of the bottom half of the body. <laughs> Okay, no. <laughs> the butts are the butts. That is all there is to it. Cause I'm not. No, no, no I'm not. I'm gonna stop what I was. Stop what I was about to say right there. Now, all I'm gonna say is no. The butts are the butts. And the boobs are the boobs. The butts are not the boobs of the. No, come on. Let's back on focus. Let's back on topic here. I I'm gonna call this show. I'm gonna change the name from Experience Points Podcast to Rant and Rave <laughs> Tangent. Streaming podcast. <laughs> we have five minutes in the show. We've gone like this huge tangent on butts. Anyway, what was your favorite um, friendship that you saw from the trailer? Um, honestly, I I think it was. I, I kind of like the bootleg one with Katana, where they're just like running around, like happy, all hugging it, all just partying. But I also like the one where uh, I. I can't remember if it was Kano. Somebody started fry, like started grilling on a barbecue. Oh my god, that made me literally laugh out loud. I was like dying laughing. I was like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. The most and then I think, oh, oh, and, no, and then the one was, <laughs> the one was sub zero. That was so bootleg. That was, I was like, what the hell? He was all happy. He like skipped, he skipped off the screen and got the ice cream. That was hilarious. Maybe because I love ice cream, but that was hilarious. See, that's the kind of humor is the easy going that you need to kind of take away from what Mortal Kombat really is—a blood sport where I don't see how anybody's alive. That damn song is killing me. The friendship song that they have now, Lord. Song. Kind of reminds me of humiliation music from Killer Instinct. <laughs> now that was good stuff. Humiliation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
Humiliation. Trey loved that song. That was all. <laughs> he sang that all the time. <laughs> well, we can look forward to that. Well, I can because you still don't have the damn game yet. And wait I for get it. Wait for it to go on sale. He'll wait. For it. He'll wait till it drops down like five bucks. Something else about Blackout. He's one of the cheapest people you ever meet in your life. Not all the time. <laughs> but that's okay. That's why we love you, brother. It's called being smart with your money. <laughs> it's called being frugal. Yeah. Frugal, frugally cheap. <laughs> Not cheap. <laughs> cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> Fine. All right, well... The friendships are back, and I'm definitely looking forward to them. It's it's, it's going to be a, a good time to see those. Um, a little something about um, <clears throat> Mortal Kombat 11 that I didn't like, but I understand fully. When you're going through the story, you can't do finish mm -hmm. You can't do, you can't do finish the moves, but it makes sense because the story has to go on. Like like the this the story and the, the combat are very very it's very seamless. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's mm -hmm. like you, you dive right into from the story into combat. Without even without even barely blinking an eye, you know what I'm saying? You like really can't tell that this happening. So you can't like do a finished move where you chop somebody in half and then expect them to go back into the story and be perfectly fine. So I get it. Yes, okay. modern day fighting games do seem to be working better with doing like a full into it story mode in comparison to just being like, Oh, let's go to arcade mode and get an ending at the end. <laughs> hey, I love those days. It's good stuff. <clears throat> My favorite game like that is Street Fighter Alpha 2. That's a good choice you picked right there. Alpha <laughs> 2 was the best alpha. <laughs> alpha 3 was my favorite alpha, but as far as the arcade mode goes, I like that one. Alpha 3 was okay, but I didn't like how the ending was where literally everybody fight fights. And even more importantly, and this wasn't in the home version, but in the arcade version, if you lost to M. Bison just one time, you got game over. Like, there was no continuing. You got a bad ending where Bison just pretty much takes over the world, and it was game over. Mm -hmm. And Bison ain't easy to fight. <laughs> he's, he's definitely not easy to fight. He's never easy to fight. Uh, he was extra hard in that game. If he hit that freaking su full screen, Psycho mm -hmm. Crusher, Super oh, Moon, yeah. and you're getting the air block. Oh, yeah. And he charged that day. I swear it was so fast. Like, you could literally be in the middle of attacking him. Like, you could be coming in with, like, a high jump kick. He, if he decides to do that move, he just, like, it just defies physics. Like, he just backed off to the edge of the screen. Like, whoop, I teleported. Nope. And then, psycho crusher. Every gone. single time. Every single time. Uh, it was, I think it was me and Juan who was playing Street Fighter 3 for the first time and we, we did the, the, the co-op story mode and that was just, that just blew my mind right there. But then when we got to Bison, it took us about a good 12 times to beat that fool and then we finally beat him. We beat him in the most epic way. We freaking both charged up our fireballs and we hit him at the same time from both sides and he died. We were like, oh, <laughs> snap. <laughs> It was a good stuff. It was a good time. Nice. Great memories. All right. Moving on. The PlayStation 5 lineup <clears throat> has, well, it's, it's going to be announced soon. But the games that they're thinking are going to be, you know, the top five for PlayStation 5 um, are as follows. The Outriders, which I don't know really anything about, should have did my research. Dying Light 2, which is a survival horror game. The first one was uh, kind of like a, a, a free-running um, first-person zombie game, which is actually pretty good, but I never beat it. Cyberpunk 2077 needs no explanation. That's going to be an amazing first-person shooter. Uh, Starfield, I don't know anything about. It sounds like a space shooter. And then Lord of the Rings, Gollum. You take over and play as Colin. Okay, so my opinion, not a very strong lineup. I mean, it has some big names like Dying Light 2, like ones that actually you could even recognize. Cyberpunk and Dying Light 2, those could be, those are gonna be pretty good. But then it's like you have this one game where it's like, okay, you don't even really know what it is exactly. They did give up. They didn't even really give hardly any of an explanation on that first game. Um. 
And then Lord of the Rings, Gollum, like, okay, what exactly, what's the gameplay? Like, what exactly are we going to be doing while we're controlling him? Like, what, what's the whole thing? You know, it's not going to, I think, you know, Lord of the Rings is a great franchise, but mm -hmm. you just don't instantly sell a game because it's Lord of the Rings. I mean, you need to know some stuff about it. I mean, most of the, um, those games based off of Lord of the Rings were very good, though, so it's probably going to be good. But I'm just saying, I need more. <laughs> You always need more. You're also greedy, aside from being cheap. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm messing with you. Um, no, but I, I, I think they should bring out, you know, uh, the hard hitters, obviously. Like, the, I think they should have the second God of War, you know, ready for launch, even though that's probably not going to happen. Um, a game that would be more likely to be ready for launch because it came out years before. <sighs> Beforehand, uncharted something. No, no, no. Although that would be yeah, awesome too. Something. No, no, no. Um, well, I'm trying to blank on this damn game. Horizon Zero Dawn two. Oh yeah, that's a, that would be fantastic. Ever. And a Spider-Man two, which they already have everything they need to make the damn game. Just make the damn game. <clears throat> if they had those three at launch, it would kill Xbox. Kill. It. It'll. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That would be the most epic launch lineup ever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or, or, the full, all parts Final Fantasy VII remake, re remake master, <laughs> where it's just everything from the beginning <laughs> to the end, not this whole chapter crap. You're so funny. Yeah, at launch, yeah, okay. Hey, right, and what if they do it? What if they pull that one out their magical butt? <laughs> they pull that one out of Chocobo's ass that would be pretty epic <laughs> oh man that would be fantastic though but yeah that's not happen well since we're talking about Final Fantasy and, and, and Chocobo asses let's move on um, no no you're the one talking about Chocobo <laughs> asses <laughs> let's move on to more Final Fantasy 7 um <clears throat> How are you finding trying to platinum the game? Well, so far I haven't really had any many troubles. I haven't actually started my hard stuff yet, though, because I've literally got everything but two trophies, but then I've been focusing on Pokemon for a reason. So I, I've been playing Pokemon a lot <laughs> yeah. lately, so I just haven't had the time to play in the last couple of days, but I'll be hitting it back up soon. But I am definitely enjoying it so far. Yeah, me too. And um, yeah, about you, yes. I, I am. Just, I'm, <clears throat> like I said last week, I'm a little disappointed that we can't you know, hit specific parts of each chapter. You have to play through the entire chapter. But the first time you play through the game, you know, it's obviously a lot longer. Um, because you first time, excuse me, first time you're in taking the game, taking all the game in and taking all the sights and sound in. So it's going to be longer. You don't, don't know what to do, but second and third time you know what to pick and know where to go and know what to do you skip certain cutscenes and stuff like that and then the fights are a lot easier because you're so OP so it's, it's it's not that bad but even with that being said it's still taking um, you know a half an hour even with me basically speed running each section it's taking, oh, I know. It's taking a half an hour to, 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 to 35 minutes to get through each each chapter it be more than that, depending on what chapter you're doing. <clears throat> well, chapter three took me half an hour to get through. Um, even though Maybe if you skip all the cutscenes. Yeah. I hey, did. skip I, all the side quests is what I mean, because like, if you ain't skipping the side quests, mm -mm. it's going to take longer than that. No, because I have to do all the side quests in order to, to, to pick her dress. So I have to do them all. So it only took me half an hour because I timed it. I take that back. The chapter three one isn't that bad. It's chapter eight. Or chapter nine, it takes forever. Chapter eight, yeah, and that, that one took a while um, to get where I needed to. I had to get to the point where I'm at now, which is where I stopped. Um, I got right to the part where I can start doing uh, side quests. That took 35 minutes. Oh, I see. Yeah, and and now I gotta do three side quests because I'm trying to get the second dress. <clears throat> I, I need the exotic dress for Tifa. I need the second dress for Aerith, and I need the purple dress for Cloud. But, like I said, I picked the exotic dress last time, and they still gave me the mature dress. 
Yeah, that's because you didn't finish a chapter. Mm, what do you mean? You didn't finish a chapter all the way. Oh no 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 no! But the thing is, I, I didn't I didn't pick that before. Uh, my, my my original option was the sporty dress, and then when I went back and picked the exotic dress, I did finish that chapter. <clears throat> And okay, because he said exotic, I mean, yeah, he said exotic, and she said okay. And then when I finished it through the chapter, and then when I went through, they changed it up to the mature dress. I see. Yeah, so I don't know what in the blue flip is happening there. And if I get to that damn thing and they give me the mature dress again, I'm gonna be mad because I picked mature dress this time just to see what the flip would happen. But whatever. Anybody besides that? Wait, wait. You picked a mature dress even though you've had the mature dress? Right, but I'm thinking that there might be some kind of glitch to where when I picked exotic the first time, it glitched over to the mature. So if I pick mature, it might glitch over to exotic. That's just or, a guess. Or you have to do another <laughs> run. Hey, I'm trying to be hopeful here, okay? I'm trying to be hopeful. We'll see what the blue hell happens. But whatever. I think I'm seriously thinking about taking my um my PS4 with me to with me out of town because this is gonna be a lazy weekend anyway. I'm not doing too much anything, <clears throat> so I'm thinking about trying to do that this weekend. Being uh, you know, doing some social distancing where I'm at. <laughs> well, usually you just stay at home when you're social distancing. I'm just saying. You can social distance in the house. Works that way too. So I'm just saying that's just the, the, the smarter and cheaper way to social distancing, but okay. <laughs> well, we gotta go see family. Definitely. No, you don't. You can see them on the. You can get vo voice calls, I mean, video calls. All right, we want to go see family. We want to be with family and interact with family instead of just being distant. Okay. That's fine for you. Um, my me and my family distant as hell right now. <laughs> I ain't seen anybody other than my sister and my grandmother. This is like February. Mm. Yeah, well, that's okay. Your family lives far away anyway, so. Well, not my uncle, but yeah, a lot of them do. I got you. All right. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <clears throat> I ran across this article. Uh, Monday, I believe. Yeah, I think it was probably no. Yeah, yeah. It was it was Monday. I went across this article about the the best voted female character in Final Fantasy VII remake, as per the fans in Japan. Oh, the Japanese, huh? <laughs> and it gets weird. <laughs> it gets weird. So we're gonna go down this list. I'm gonna see if you agree. And I believe it's the top nine. Wait. Okay. Uh, no, it's the top ten. They start with nine for some reason. It's the top ten. They definitely messed. Oh no, it's, it says tied. Okay, that's what happened. Well, it's the top ten. Anyway. All right. So uh, do, 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 do. the report reads. It starts off saying, "By in Final Fantasy VII remake, the male character spotlight is on the spiky-haired swordsman Cloud. Pretty much the entire game." That's no surprise, since not only is the protagonist a lot, <clears throat> a lot of the other male characters don't get into the meaty parts of the arcs until later on in the game, uh, but the female cast, you know, has a huge showing throughout the entire game, basically, which is great because there's a lot of female damn characters in this damn game. I remember the first time I saw uh, Scarlet, which is number ten by the way, in the four votes, I was like. Holy crap. I'm going to tell you right now, Scarlet <laughs> stole Tifa's boobs. Oh my that God. is exactly what you're having <laughs> right there. Well, in the game, they were ginormous. In, in the they weren't that big. They, were, they weren't Tifa big. I don't know. No, they weren't Tifa big. They were, they, a been... they were a lot of polygons in those boobs back in 1997. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, I got to see another shot of Scarlet because I, cause I swear in the remake, her face was kind of broke off to me. Yeah, I'm looking at the picture right now. Her face is a little broke off, but just peek down just a little bit, bad. Yes, the bo that's all about the boobs. Yeah, she could actually just put a bag over her head. Okay, who's she tied with? <laughs> all right, uh, Scarlet had four votes. I don't know. It, does, it doesn't say how many votes it is, but Scarlet was at the bottom with four votes, and she was tied with Madam M with four votes. I 
I would have put Madame M a little higher because you know. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Come on, Blackout, enlighten us. Why would she go higher on the list? <laughs> because you, she had a, she even, was a, she even, was a even, decently even, deep character, <laughs> and she was a major part of the um storyline. She was deep in your pants. Deep in your pants. That's what you. Mean. <laughs> Don't forget, it's Japanese. Okay, so it's not America. America vote. She probably higher. It's Japanese votes. True. Because the Americans like the, I mean, Japanese like the damn blondes. Anyways, go on. Alright, number eight is, and you might not remember who the hell she is, Betty. Do you know who she is? Uh, that little kid. How they got all oh, time? Time! Time out! No, no, not listen, 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 like listen, like listen, listen, the list is not the sexiest female character. The list is the <laughs> best female character, okay? So, just take it from there. <laughs> yes, she is a young girl in the slums who like cats and music. Yes, I remember her very well. I guess that she did have, uh, I mean, not so much the cats in chapter 3, but in the chapter 13 or 14, whichever chapter that is, where the final quest is, she actually kind of had a major part where she was cheering up the poor, depressed people. Mm -hmm. She sure was. And this next one is very interesting. Would you like to take, take a guess? Um, this is number seven? Yes. Um, I'm going to say, don't ask me how, considering how little that they really have actually had this person. I'm going to say, Leslie's fiance. <laughs> you are wrong. Number seven, and yes, I'm not even joking, is Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> What? I told you it gets weird. <laughs> okay, I need to hear the reason behind this one. Alright, it says, yes, Barrett. We're not sure how the hulking daddy with a machine gun for an arm ended up on the response for remake's best heroine, but apparently there's at least a few fans keeping their fingers crossed that when the remake finally makes its way to Gold, makes its way to Gold Saucer Amusement Park, Cloud can still end up going on a date with Barrett. Aww. And here's the thing, I didn't even know you could do that until I actually saw a trophy board in the remaster. Because I'm like, how do you go on a date? You must have to be doing the worst things ever to every one of those yep. girls. Yep. Uh, when I, I've even gone on a date with Yuffie. My, uh, my third playthrough, oh, that, that's a terrible date. On my third playthrough of the original game back in the day, I actually wound up on a date with Bear because I was curious to see, you know, what happens if you just, like, you know, did like really bad stuff to T for years. So, so yeah, I went up on a date with Baird and he just sat there. He was like, This is the worst date ever. <laughs> okay, for, first of all, who was your first date with? Uh, Aries. Yeah, of course it was. Of course it was. It's my boo. I mean, so you uh, so you treated not T for my first date. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I can definitely see that happen. B. Uh, number six on the list is with 20 votes. Oh, by the way, Barrett got seven votes. <laughs> uh, and number six got 20 votes. It is Marlene. I knew it was going to be Marlene, but at the same time, I still can't believe Barrett beat out Scarlet. <laughs> and Madam Man, what the hell's wrong with these people? Hey, people in Japan like themselves a good, a good gun arm. Some, some, <laughs> some gun arm right tight. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag tentacle porn. <laughs> anyway, yep, Marlene made it. It's number six with Tony votes, and they said just because she's so damn cute and they she's love. adorable, yes. They there, love there's no doubt there. Number five with 35 votes is a kitty. Kitty. mother. Kitty. 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 I think they say Curie, actually, but. Kitty. Yeah, Kitty. <laughs> I was originally starting to think it was going to be freaking Yuffie in disguise. You know what? I never even thought that until they just said it right now on this thing. It, that's exactly what it says. <clears throat> it says... Uh, I'll oh, so say you can read that. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, it says, with Larcinius ninja girl Yuffie being saved for future remakes, 
releases, Smoky Kirie steps up to fill the role of someone who looks out for herself with a plum. So I didn't, I didn't even think about her. That would have been awesome. Though. The first time I saw her, I'm thinking, she even come out. She's even got like the the long like sock things. Like kind of like her look was just so much like Yuffie that ain't even funny. That is true. And she was a thief. And she was a thief. That's true. So actually, it I mean it it, it still might be her. There's no reason. Yeah, it's possible. No reason it can't be. Huh. It's possible. I was actually looking for. Hmm. Is it somehow that Yuffie like the name like does it actually somehow like if you turn the letters upside down and backwards and reverse <laughs> the order could that be Yuffie? <laughs> that would have been awesome. And that's actually, uh, that's actually a really good observation. Hmm, I'm going to hold on to that. Damn it, you just spoiled it for the future. <laughs> for the future releases. Thanks, Jones. I appreciate Over, it. Over, you'll forget. Oh, oh, oh memory burn. <laughs> All right, we're going to just ignore that. Number four, with 76 votes, was... Drum roll, please. <laughs> Loud in a dress. <laughs> I should not even be surprised you anymore. Knew that was they already voted for Barrett, so yeah. You knew that was gonna happen. Huh? I know. I was That's hoping coming. it wouldn't, but I know. <laughs> Good stuff, though. He didn't even try to sound like a woman. I know, right? <laughs> He's like, back off. And Cornell still picked. Him. Horny ass, the big bone chick. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the big bone girl. Oh, freaky ass. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even do it. It was, it was actually hilarious when Eric actually imitated it. <laughs> and I was, I was laughing so hard. She did the shake and everything. She's so damn cute. She was so damn cute. Cloud, permission to kill. Denied. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> I love that damn game. Ah, uh, all right. Number three is one of my personal favorites. You want to take a guess? Number three. Let's see, because Teeth is number two and Eric is number one. Number three must be Eric's mother. Ew. What? Oh, no. Man. Nasty. Jesse. <laughs> oh crap! I forgot about Jesse. Damn it! <laughs> Time. Hold on. Time for. Time for reversal. <laughs> Number three is Jesse. Oh man, I forgot about poor Jesse. How did I forget? That's one of my personal favorites too. Yeah. Two hundred and ninety-eight votes. She got. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed her character throughout the story. I, I, I love how they fleshed, you know, those side characters out. We talked about this before, but um, yeah. but definitely Jesse was super floaty little thing. And 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 she didn't really play like that in the original. Not at all, not at all. I don't even know if they had any um direct conversation with each other in the original. Yeah, I've actually been think thinking about going back and playing that. I honestly, I've been thinking about downloading it on my Switch, and um, I think I have it on my Switch already. I thought you already had. Yes, I was gonna say I thought you already bought the game like four and a half times. <laughs> if I would have. Technically, I'm not even lying because you bought the remake twice already. Nobody and I know you, you got it on play hey, Okay, you got it like five times. Shut up. Yeah, you got, you got like five versions of the game. Shut up. I'm just the best day. You say I'm cheap. Well, I'm definitely the opposite of you. Legit, 100%. I spend, I guess what I want, bruh. Make it right. <laughs> anyway, number two with... Number two, uh, the their pick is going to be Tifa. Of no. course, my number one is Tifa and number two is Eric. But, bruh. at the same time, <laughs> I kind of do like Eric too. Can I just have... Can, Oh, you know what? I'm gonna say Tifa one. Okay, oh, okay, you know what? Both I got two number one. I got I got two for one. I got Tifa and Eric as a tie for number one. But okay, number two. I predicted the all uh, Asian pick Tifa. You predicted wrong. <laughs> number two with 635 votes is actually Eric's mom. Julie. I'm just joking. It's actually Eric. <laughs> you got too quiet. <laughs> Why'd you get so quiet? <laughs> I was waiting for to hear a response. <laughs> yeah, it's actually Eric. 
good. The freaking Asians know what they should be picking. Oh lord. Of course they're gonna pick Tifa as number one. She looks like a she looks Asian as hell. And uh, <clears throat> Tifa got 892 votes out of the Japanese It is true. Crowd. She does look Asian, but at the same time, she isn't Asian, but she has a lot of Asian qualities. But then she also has the nice American qualities, too, if you know what I'm saying. So stupid. I think it was her red eyes that put her over. Yeah, that's potential, even though I thought they were actually supposed to be, like, brownish red, but yeah. Because Aerith is way cuter. Oh, that was funny. Character is cuter. I won't say Eret is cuter, but Eret's character is cuter. She she's definitely she had more all oh, and, <laughs> and all sorts of moments that you just like adored her. Like when Cloud and um Eret are going through chapter early chapter nine when Cloud is learning how to do a high five and <laughs> the awkwardness of those moments. <laughs> Well, it was so funny when Cloud finally went for it. He's like, wait, did you? Nope. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I promise we'll be on the same page next time. She's so cute. Uh, it was hilarious. Cloud was like, wait, did you? Nope. Well, to me, physically, she's much more attractive than Tifa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game. For you. For I, you. I thought Tifa was kind of mad in this game. Kind of what? what? Man. What's wrong with you? Yeah, the other day they did is they nerfed down her boobs some, which I am disappointed at, but she's still. <laughs> Alright, Homer. <laughs> Especially in those dresses. Man, it don't matter which dress. <laughs> all three dresses. <laughs> and now we know why Eric got all nine dresses. <laughs> For the trophy. <laughs> in your pants. But I'm going to say this right now. Even, I'm gonna put it like this. All the Cloud's dresses are okay. All the Tifa's dresses are mm hmm. Aerith has two decent dresses, but then that third dress. She was, she was funny. <laughs> that was just too damn funny. Oh, man. <laughs> damn cats came out with her. I'll never forget that. Never gonna forget that as long as I live. It's so funny because the first time I got the best dress, and you know, Johnny's got yes, the red carpet and she's got like the paparazzi. Yeah. And I go and do the freaking the worst dress. <laughs> I'm expecting another. I'm like, okay, well, Johnny still have the um carpet. <laughs> no, definitely not. That. <laughs> That was too funny. He had his he had his head to the side. He was looking away like he didn't know her. <laughs> <laughs> the music got so sad. I swear even her hair looked broke off in that dress. Yeah, it did. Poor baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I hope they do in part two. I hope, hope that we could like pick from different costumes, like change our costumes. That'd be fantastic. That'd be fantastic. All right. More and more Final Fantasy. Let's move on. Moving onward. This week in gaming history, and we're actually going to start on Sundays now. So I'm going to start from last Sunday and just move forward to today, which is Wednesday. <clears throat> no. What did I tell you about being honest? <laughs> All you have to say is that we're going to start off Sunday and end on Saturday. The and of this podcast really. He's so silly. Anyway, Sunday, May 17th, <clears throat> this day in Japan, actually, eight years ago, for the PSP, released Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. Okay, I would just like to say, didn't Persona 2 originally come out, like, way, way longer ago than that? Way, way longer ago, but you get what I'm saying. Isn't that like, so is this like a remaster of Persona 2? I'm pretty sure it was. <clears throat> it actually might be like a spin off kind of thing. I wouldn't be surprised if it was that. Um, I never played Persona until Persona 5, and that game was just freaking sweet. Enjoyed that damn game. I, I, yeah, I, I still haven't played one yet, but I've always heard a lot about it. Yeah, I mean, I well, that's not true. I did play the demo for Persona 4 that came out on the Switch. Um, Persona 4 or Persona 4 Arena? I know. I'm, you know what? I'm thinking about this guy of 4. Never mind. Sorry. Never mind. We can't. Anyway. Uh, Monday, May 18th, 10 years ago, for the PS3 and Xbox 360, was the 
original game to a huge, huge follow-up that came out last year. You want to take a guess what it was? Um, for a huge follow-up that came out last year. Mm -hmm. Huge um, follow-up and emphasis on huge. Huge. Um, as as in two discs, a hundred gigabytes huge. Oh, um, um, hold on. Uh, last year? I thought that came uh, I thought that came out two years ago. We're just gonna say it, because the only game I can think of that was even that big, it was Red Dead Redemption. Yes, sir. That came out ten years ago on Monday, <clears throat> May 18th, on PS3 and Xbox 360. Um, I don't think I got it when it first came out. I just heard a bunch about it. I mean, I, I always love playing Rockstar games because it just they do such an amazing job, but I didn't play this game until later on. And then the same stupid shit that happens always, I get 40, 50 hours in the game, and somehow my damn memory gets erased. That's just, and it happened twice with this game. I'm like, oh my god, I'm not playing this game three times. So How did your memory get erased on PlayStation 3 era? I don't know. It just always happens to me, somehow. So what I, what I wound up doing was, I wound up just watching the ending of the game, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, have you ever played Red Dead? I did play the original Red Dead, but it was, this was a time when I was kind of in a renaissance and I didn't know what the hell I wanted to play. I like started like three or four games, but I never really got too far in any of them. I started Red Dead Redemption. I started um, Star Wars. What's the really good one? Force Unleashed Part One. Ooh, that was good. And then it was like another one I started. I didn't play through any of them that far. I like I just got into a little, and I was like, mm -hmm. move on to another game. I did not know what I wanted to play. Yeah, I get in those moves sometimes. <clears throat> um, all right. Well, Tuesday, May nineteenth, uh, nine years ago, again in Japan for the three DS. It's a very very popular fighting game that you like that you like a lot. You want to take a guess? There's a very popular fighting game that I like a lot. Mm -hmm. In Japan, nine years ago. It has, it has something to do with what we were talking about earlier. If you know what I mean, bouncy, bouncy. <laughs> something to do with boobs. Come on now. Jiggle. Fighting I mean, game, boobs. I mean, together. it could easily be dead or alive, but it seems like it would be too obvious of a reason. I didn't know I should... Dead or Alive after it came out on the Nintendo. It system. is Dead or Alive. It was it was a game called Dead or Alive Dimensions. Okay. Yeah, so I never heard of it either. <clears throat> but I want to play it because it's portable boobs. <laughs> yeah, goody. Uh, and then the last game that I got on the list, uh, at least eight years ago today, on the 3DS, was Mario Tennis Open. Mario Tennis games are usually good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely always had a blast playing those games. I wish they would bring back the uh, the Mario Strikers. Oh, those games are ph phenomenal. So, so good. I, I remember back in the day, I used to play Mega Man Soccer. I love Mega Man Soccer. The game was so good. That's probably my favorite soccer game of all time. <laughs> you better not turn that to Apocalypse. <laughs> eh, whatever, Apocalypse. Yeah. I, I will Mega Buster... All of your FIFA games. <laughs> That's good stuff. <clears throat> so on next week's episode, we'll have a few extra, a uh, few extra games that you know came out because we got some extra days to the weekend. But that's neither here nor there. Moving on to our special announcement. Alrighty, well, this coming up, well, technically yesterday, but. They were, um, I don't know, actually two days ago. Well, whatever, I guess we're going to play on what day it is. Starting Thursday at about 7 p.m., I will be entering the Pokemon International Tournament May 2020 competition, which, if I place high enough, could give me a chance to get to the Players' Cup tournament that's going to be starting in July. And if I can win that and go into the finals in August, I can win... A trip to a international championship match. I mean, that's a lot to go by. I mean, like you know, basically, I gotta win a lot of matches. I gotta do real good. Gotta play, and then I gotta get better and better. But we'll see what happens. I've been training up a new team this last week, 
I've still got to do a little bit more practicing to get used to them, but I feel that I have a solid lineup. So, you know, I mean, I've only been playing competitive Pokemon since the beginning of the year, but I, I think I've gotten decent. I won't say I'm like the greatest yet, but I think I can hold my own. So, yeah. Fantastic. And we are all excited about that. Jones, will you be streaming or recording your battles? I'll do some recording. Yay. That would be nice for our uh, our 21 subscribers that we have. <laughs> to yeah, see, tired of 17. To see, I know, right? Actually, I, I looked at the day. I was like, we got two more. Yay. Um, <laughs> no, but it'll be great. I mean, if you just record those and post them <clears throat> at your leisure. I'll record some of them. You don't. You trust me. You don't want to um watch 45 battles. That might take some couple hours. That's how many battles it is. Lord. Well, you can battle 15 times a day, up to 15. But I guess if you you could also just do all 45 on a Sunday or whatever. But yes, there's a total of 45 battles. Cause this one is basically you just need to like you know get as many wins as you can, get a high rating or whatever. So you know winning matches, don't lose matches, sort of type thing like that so i guess you know like whoever's got the most like points or you know for whatever you want to call it for that gets the um because there's a competition not a tournament the one that's coming up in july will actually be a double elimination tournament okay so what is your plan are you gonna do like a few a day are you gonna do 15 a day what are you gonna do not sure i mean there's different ways i can go about it. it's like i might wait until like Friday, like the morning time around 11 or 12 when it's Japanese mid or Japanese midnight is like 10 a.m. my time. So if I play around 12, I take out more Americans hopefully because you know <laughs> I mean I don't mean to say anything wrong, but the Japanese are usually a little bit tougher than the Americans. Not saying that I don't like a challenge, but it this is going to be based off of how you do in your like region anyways. I'd rather take out more Americans in the earlier rounds, you know. I think I have a chance of beating these damn Americans. I'm not saying that the Americans suck, but I think that there are better. There's more Japanese players out there than American players. But I don't know. At the same time, I've been beating a lot of Japanese players, and I'll be playing at like midnight my time. So, eh, it's just a mind thing. I'm just gonna go out there and do what I can. I'm not sure how I'm gonna space it out. Okay. I'm not sure. All right. Well, <clears throat> uh, whatever you do, uh, record your first match. Um, let's, how about this? Let's do three matches of your choosing. <coughs> okay. Okay. Um, I would suggest the first and last, obviously, and then probably somewhere in between is probably the best thing to do, but it's up to you. You do what you like, but we would like to see your progress and how you do, and we are definitely rooting for you. Yay. Happy J. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yay. <laughs> Uh, we will resume the Blackout Challenge as of next week because uh, J Jones has to get back to his Pokemon training and I have to get packing for my trip. So, with that being said, we are going to end this short episode of Experience Points Podcast. And thank you for joining us. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe and leave a like. And if you have any comments, anything you want to say about the podcast or us or any topics that we talked about, please leave a comment and I'll definitely look into it and get back to you. And as always, gamers, keep on leveling up. <laughs>